Hello, good morning, viewers, and welcome to another Out of Spec Guide video. It's hard to imagine, especially on this nice, warm September day, but winter is coming, and electric car batteries charge slower when they're cold. And in this video, I want to show you how to get the maximum charging performance of your Hyundai, Kia, or Genesis electric vehicle as winter is approaching. These cars are particularly affected by cold weather at a DC fast charging station. So in this video, it'll be a quick one. I'll show you how to activate battery preconditioning and how to also prepare for maximum charging speeds when the temperatures dip very cold. And here we have a Hyundai Ioniq 6 to demonstrate this with. However, you'll notice the software is the same across all three brands between Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis. So if you have a Kia EV9 or a Genesis GV70, it doesn't matter. This process will work between all of the cars. Before I show you how to actually activate battery preconditioning, let me tell you a little bit about when and why you would want to use this feature and also let you know that I have some more resources on this topic if you want to go even further in depth. Before we go too far into the rabbit hole in this video, if you truly want to learn all of the nerd stuff about how the preconditioning logic works and what temperature it it brings the battery to in the side-by-side -side differences of a preconditioned car and a non-preconditioned car, well, you're in luck because I have all of those videos already live on our EV Expert channel, the Out of Spec Reviews channel, and I'll leave two different videos for you linked. The first one will be a Hyundai Ionic 5 preconditioning test. That was a cold day, middle of winter, testing the logic, looking at the temperature of the battery. And the second video is actually where we took two Volkswagen ID4s without preconditioning and drove them in a different manner. One, we drove really hard, full throttle, big regen, full throttle, yo-yoing the car to heat up the battery even more. And then we showed you how fast that car charged versus one that we just drove gently over to the charging station. So if you want more info, we got it. However, if you're just looking for the basics on how to activate it and when to activate it, this is the video to start with. So let's say it's a really cold day outside. You know, we're talking anything below 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so that would be what, 10 degrees Celsius or less. Uh, you're just cruising home and you're going to put plug it in the garage and let it charge overnight. That's how most people use their electric cars. Or you charge at the office and it's a slow level two charger. There is no need to precondition your car on the way to a slow charger. The car will still charge just fine, even if it's absolutely stone cold frozen out. There are very rare circumstances where if you let the car turn into an ice cube, I mean, minus 30, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and you let it sit, I'm talking Arctic temperatures, and you let it sit unused for you know a period of time where the battery gets that cold you will plug it into a charging station and it doesn't hurt the car but it's actually not going to be able to charge the battery pack initially what it's going to do is pull the power from the wall from your garage from your office from the public charging station whatever you're plugged into and it's going to take that energy to run a battery heater once the battery heater once the battery temperature comes to a certain threshold it will actually start to then charge the battery. Lithium does not like to charge when it's really extremely cold. You can get lithium plating, lithium crystallizing, and it's irreversible degradation. And so the car manufacturers tune the cars, every car on the market, so that this is no problem. You can plug in the car without thinking about it. You might have to run a battery heater for 20, 30, 40 minutes before it starts charging, but eventually it will start charging. Um, so the big thing to know here is you do not have to precondition your battery pack for every charging session. When should you precondition your car for a battery? Or what am I trying to say? Precondition your battery for a high power charging station. Well, it's when you're on your way on a road trip over multiple charging stops. Uh, and, and even if you just need a quick top up at a high power station, I'm talking if you're going to plug into a station that's 150 kilowatts or more, that's when you really want to make sure that you precondition your car. And what it's actually going to do is burn a little bit extra energy from inside your battery pack to warm itself up. 
And then the warmer it is, the faster it will actually charge. And so, especially for those of you who own Hyundai Kia Genesis vehicles, these vehicles are extremely affected by temperature in terms of charging speed. So you might notice one day, if you forget to precondition, you might only get 30 or 40 kilowatts of charging power, which is very little at a DC fast charger when the car's maximum is 220, 230, 240. So you're expecting a 10 or 15 minute charge and it can turn into 45 minutes to an hour in some cases. So that's when you want to use preconditioning. When you're heading to a fast charger, when the temperature outside is cold and you want to make sure you have the maximum charging performance possible. Let me show you how to do it. Before we do anything, we need to make sure that we have turned on this function. So I'm actually gonna go, you know, just as an example, we're here on the home screen. I'm gonna come over here to the EV menu. We'll click into this. I'm gonna click this little hamburger in the top. They all kind of work the same and you just get into the EV settings. I typically recommend charging, uh, you know, setting your AC limit to the lowest possible. So for me, actually, I usually keep my car at 50% and then when I go on a longer trip, I'll bump it higher than that. It's totally up to you. Um, I just would not recommend keeping it at 100% all the time. But that can be a topic for another video. When you come here to battery conditioning mode, you just wanna make sure it's turned on. And um, once that's on, you can leave it on. It will only come on when you follow the following steps and select the charger. I'll show you that in a moment, but you just need to make sure that this setting is enabled. So now you know when to activate the charging station, what you're gonna do, it's actually chilly enough today where I've put my heated seat on for the first time of the year. It's 63 degrees right now. Uh, what we're gonna do is come over here to map and I'm going to essentially look up where the DC fast chargers are in the area. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can go to search, you can go to EV charging stations, and I can search for name, hmm, let's think. The, the thing is, you can see here, all of these are AC chargers, and it will not precondition for AC charging power, because again, it's just not needed. And I really actually think that this uh, system is is pretty clunky. I'm not here reviewing the system, but this is like not good or easy. What I would recommend is favorite some of your local DC fast charging stations. Now in the case of me, I know where our local high power charging station is. So I'm here in Fort Collins. So I'm gonna come down here to this area, boom, right over here. And I'm gonna find that little plug and that little plug I'm gonna center. And it's gonna say target 1178 Electrify America. Whoops, let's get it right back on there again. So it's gonna have this, I'm gonna click info. Don't see this pop up anymore. And you can see the car knows that is it's a ultra fast charger. So it knows this is a high power DC charger and I'm going there. So I'm gonna set this as my destination. Once you have a high power charging station set in your navigation, the only other thing that you really need to do is drive there. That is literally it, so simple. And um, the car will automatically choose when to precondition. About one to two minutes after selecting your destination, you will see a message pop up in the car that says battery preconditioning. And you'll actually see that the inside of your battery logo, it changes for Hyundai, Kia, or Genesis, but might turn into a little coil or might change color, but that little logo will change from a zap to a coil. Now there are some restrictions as to when this car will and won't precondition. For example, it won't precondition at very low states of charge. And so watch my full in-depth video for all that extra knowledge. But that's really all you have to do is just make sure you have the car know that it's going to a charging station in the built-in maps. Yes, it's clunky. Yes, it's a little bit annoying, but that's the way to do it. Once it knows it's going to a charger, it will warm itself up. And the extra two minutes you take to find the charger in the system and activate it and navigate it there will save you 20, 30, 40 minutes at the charging station by the time you get and there. And you can see actually, <laughs> here we go. Battery conditioning activated for DC charging. And you can see we now have the coil. It's only been about one to two minutes after we selected the charger and it's now warming the battery up. You can see it's actually even useful even though it's not super cold outside right now, it's still deciding to warm up the battery. So now as you're heading to a DC charger, you might see that message pop up on the drive in and uh, at least you know that the car will be warming up the battery pack so you can get the fastest 
charging possible. Again, there's a lot of asterisks to this system in terms of state of charge, in terms of distance from the charger, and I have all of those listed in another video linked below. A couple things to keep in mind is if you dip below 20% state of charge, it will actually shut off preconditioning, and that's really annoying because you want to get to the charger at low state of charge to get the maximum uh, you know, charging performance on a road trip. The other thing I will caution you for is, especially if it's cold and windy and rainy outside, all of the water splashing on the battery pack underneath and chilly temperatures will actually cool down the battery pack on a road trip in between charging sessions. So it's always a good idea while you're charging at your DC charger on a road trip, plug in the next one in the in-car system, not using CarPlay, not using Waze. It has to be on the in-car system. Once that next charger is selected, then you can at least make sure you'll get high power charging at each stop. Your efficiency will decrease as it warms up the battery, but you'll be able to onboard so much more energy and it's totally worth it. So thanks so much for watching this out of spec guide video. If there's more you wanna see, of course, email us at guide at outofspecstudios.com and we'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.